Hello, my name is Rafael, and we are with New York Kino Kunia Books. Today we are speaking with Stefan Mater, creator of the comic series Teflon Funk, published by Dark Horse Comics. Uh, Teflon Funk is a story heavily inspired by both anime and hip-hop about four individuals, all from different walks of life, who are all strangely connected. Um, thank you very much for meeting with us thank today, you, Thank you, thank you for having me. Pleasure <laughs> So, to jump right in, why don't you tell us a little bit about like your background and what, just how did you get into creating comic series at all? Like, what, what, what got you started? It was a happenstance, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I wasn't really reading comic books like that growing up. I mostly read you know, Archie comics and mm -hmm. Sunday comics like Peanuts and um, Garfield, stuff like that. But I was always a big animation fan, you know, uh, Don Blue, Disney, uh, T um, TMNT, Chippendales, mm -hmm. all this type of stuff. Um, and I, I, I got into anime, I would say, like in the early to mid 90s. Like they had some shows on Nickelodeon that were actually from Japan. Like one of them I know was Maya the Bee, another one called Little Bits. But you know, I didn't realize that until later on. But um, one of my first like real interactions, I would say, is like like that I knew was from Japan was um, I'd say like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Guyver. My cousin uh -huh. put me on the Guyver, which I was I scared the <laughs> crap out of me. Because <laughs> um, I didn't realize that's when I actually when I first saw the Guyver, um, the OVA series from '89, um, I realized wow. This animation for adults, I even like mm -hmm. that blew my mind in 1995. So yeah, that's 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 my background in a sense. And I was always drawing. I was always drawing co cartoons, co like comic book characters sometimes. Um, but it was mostly something I would just do at school, and everyone knew like, oh, that's the that's the art guy, that's the artist, that's the font, he's the art guy. And you know, I always killed it in art class. And, but that's that's I would say those are my early beginnings. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, in a nutshell. It's great to hear. So I understand that it took you. That the hardest part about this was the title itself. Is that like it took you like up to a year to come up with the title. So like, what is Teflon Funk, and how did you come up with the title? Yeah, that took me almost a year. Uh, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> did your research? But, yeah, that took me almost a year because uh, I couldn't think of a name for the life. I think because I would. I try to think of. I, I, I know it's, it's tough to come up with a unique name that no one else has used before. So. Uh, I was I was working at the airport uh, at this airport job and I was on my way to work sitting on the bus I was on Linden Boulevard I'm, I'm from Queens by the way so yeah. and I was on the bus heading over to JFK Airport and I was listening to uh, Ready to Die Notorious B.I.G. and one of his one of my favorite songs on the album was uh, Machine Gun Funk and I always liked the title and then you know. When, I, when you skip over to like the sixth track, it's a song called Ready to Die, and there's a, a line where he says, Teflon is the material for the Imperial. And I was like, shit, that funk. Teflon, shit. And I was like, oh, Teflon. So I just, I That's took cool. a, a, a okay. lyric from one song and a title from another, and I combined it. And then I had some coworkers I knew I was trying to come up with a title for my little story. I was 19 at the time. And when I figured it out, I was like, oh, I went to one of my coworkers, I was like, yo, yo, yo. I can't remember the name, I can't remember the name. You never guess what it is. All right, you tell me what it is. I said, check this out. It's Teflon Funk. And he looked at me, he goes, I like it. <laughs> and, then I just, and then I just ran with it. So every time I told someone the name, they loved it. And I just I just ran with it. And no one else used it. So I said, all right, it's fine. So, I mean, it definitely makes it original. Yeah, it stands yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just changed the spelling to, you know, help it stand out a little more. Right, right, right. right, right. Makes right. Sense. Yeah, yeah. And also, because my name is Stefan, S-T-E-P-H. So it's like T-E-P-H. Hey, so it's a play on my name, right? Because okay, yeah. a lot of people started calling me a, a Teflon at work. Like, a lot of, at my old job, like, I would walk in, I was like, oh, Teflon for me, it's Teflon, Teflon. Like, right? So it's, a, it's also a play on that, too. Not by happenstance, though. Okay. By yeah. happenstance. That's why I put the PH. That makes sense. Right. So that's why I came with the name. Right. right. I, I didn't even notice that part. That's no, kind of no, cool. No, no. There's a lot of, like, you see the, the logo right there. There's uh -huh. a lot of, um, I put a lot of undertones in the logo. You see the logo, originally it was a graffiti logo that I drew, uh -huh. but um, eventually I changed it, because I said that's too typical, because you know, New York hip hop titles, it's always right, graffiti, right, 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 graffiti, right. graffiti. I said, you know what, let me do this instead. Let me instead put, uh, make it look different. So I got inspired by Dragon Ball GT's logo, or Dragon Ball's logo with the ball on the right, and then with the cassette right there, huh? when you see the logo with the cassette, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, um, an upcoming artist. What's the first thing an artist does? He has a demo tape. Yeah, like right. a little mixtape. Right, right. right. Yeah, so it's double, yeah. So it's like a little. Okay. So like when you when you look at this logo, that's your first impression of Teflon. That's your first impression of me as an artist. First thing you see is a demo tape. So this, so this logo is my demo tape 
you know, that's so cool. Right, right, symbolically, okay. it's like my demo tape. And then when you open the book, you see, look, when you open the book, like when I had my single comics, right? When you open yeah. the book, you see a record, mm -hmm. right? So it's, a, it's, it's supposed to, yeah, <laughs> it's supposed to like symbolize growth. That makes sense, yeah. So it's like, when I did my single comics, there were 45 singles. Uh -huh. You open it up like 45 singles. So yeah. when an artist first starts out, they start doing a demo tape, then they do a single, then they do an LP. So it's supposed to be the progression and also supposed to symbolize what the story talks about growth. So yeah. That's nobody really nobody caught cool. it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was that was purposefully done, yeah. Right, so with that note, I mean, kind of what you're saying, this might be all the simplification, but like what do you hope readers will get out of the story? Well, it's, you know, like the back of the book says it's coming of age. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty much what it is, all in all. Um and you know, one of the main characters tries to like solve their problems with a get rich quick type of scheme. Mm -hmm. And I'm guilty of it too. Yo, if you want to succeed in life, you can't you can't skip the steps. But if you do, you're gonna get burned. I'm I can I can speak for that. I'm sure we all can speak for that. So it's a process. You gotta you gotta give yourself time to grow. Um, it's kind of like with people right now trying to get their own animated series and they're rushing. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to let yourself grow. Right. Because I started really putting this stuff out there like for real, for real, in like 2012. Mm -hmm. And I just gradually, like slowly, like just started building in the background until everyone was able to see, you know, when it was ready and was able to see it. So. That's what I would say I want people to take away from it. It's like, you can't just rush things. You have to just take things for what they are and then just, just slow and steady always wins a race. I would say something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> we, we all do. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I know the book is described as like almost like a love letter to the five boroughs that's yeah, inside yeah, of New York City. Definitely. I'm curious. Um, the book is set in the 90s. I'm curious, what inspired you to set it in the 90s as opposed to like any other decade or even like present time? Like why the 90s? The biggest inspiration, because um, I've been trying to make my own series since I was like 12 years old. I'm 36 now. So when I was a kid, I had a problem. I didn't like a lot of cartoons yet for a while. I said, damn, damn there's substance, it's for kids. Because you know, a lot of things I have a problem with American cartoons, they always try to cater to kids. And it's like, uh -huh. mm -hmm. you can't do that. You know, that it's, it's already been proven that adults love animated stuff if it's good. Look at Love, Death, Robots, look at, look at Bebop, look at uh, The Simpsons, South Park. Like, there's an audience for it. It, can't, it doesn't have to be adult comedy. It could be some serious stuff. So, um, I would say my biggest search for was Illmatic. Um, I was listening to a lot of Illmatic at that time. I was like 17, 18 years old. And when I finally came up with a, with a story, it started, just popped in my head about this little girl. I had drawn a duel with a little girl in like, biology class right before I graduated high school. And um, I redrew it after, a little after I graduated. And um, I came up with a story. It just actually popped in my head. And I, I didn't write it down. I actually typed it on my computer. And then you know, I showed some people, showed my sister, and they said, oh, this is really good. We should do more. And I never was a writer. I was always an artist, like just a uh, sketch artist. I drew, I drew all types. I drew everything. But this was like my first time actually writing, writing something serious. So. This is when I started studying and started looking into creative writing uh, uh, afterwards. But yeah, that's how I came up with it. I would say the, I would say the biggest inspiration, obviously, Illmatic. That's why it takes place in the 90s in Queensbridge. Right. And also Spike Lee. Specifically, my favorite Spike Lee movie is uh, Clockers. So uh -huh. I think it's the most underrated movie. Because uh, the way I look at Spike Lee, because Spike Lee directed it and it was, it was produced by uh, Martin Scorsese. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I always looked at Martin Scorsese and Spike Lee like they're two sim they're very similar. One's from Queens, one's from Brooklyn. But they're two like, they're two very similar in what they do and how big of an impact they've done for the culture. Just one is black, one is white, one is from Brooklyn, one is from Queens. So that correlation and then we're going to get this movie. And then I saw, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but if you watch it, you say, oh yeah, I, I see where, I see where Stefan got it from, right? So. <laughs> But um, I used to study that movie, like, there was one time I was obsessed with the movie. I, every day off from work, like, every time I had a day off from work, even outside I get out, when I get out of work, I would just watch the movie over and over again, just study and study and study it constantly, constantly, because I was just, yeah, I was obsessed. It was a, it was a sick obsession. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, then, but it made me better. It made me a, a, better, a better writer, a better, a better creator, and then I could just relate to other, you know, I use also, also stories from people who I know in life, who I've met along the way, you know, New York. And, all over the world. I've, I've traveled the world a lot, so I, you know, I got a lot of information from that too. But I would say the biggest inspiration, uh, Illmatic Nas and um, Spike Lee. A lot of people think it's Cowboy Bebop or whatever. Because people, yeah, yeah, I, I, can, I get, see, I can see why. Yeah, I see, I see why. But even before like um, David and Nicholas took over, because they took over for the art, even before they took over, um, I was getting the comparison when I was doing 
So okay. yeah, I, I haven't made that comparison for like over ten years now. So mm-hmm. but I don't know why, but maybe I see, I see, I see, I see, the, I see some of it. But mm-hmm. when I tell people it's Illmatic and, and um, specifically um, Clockers and Spike Lee, other uh, Spike Lee films go to, that then then they start seeing. Like, oh, okay, I see. Okay, right, right. right. So right. how was it working with illustrators? Then, like, did you? Like, did you give them like the creative freedom, or were you like overseeing a lot of? Them? I gave them a lot of freedom. I gave them a lot of freedom because um, I met David roughly ten years ago, online. Mm-hmm. and uh, you know, at the time I was working at the airport. I used to work. Uh, I was there. I used to work at Delta Airlines. Okay. I used to work. I worked there for like thirteen and a half. Yeah, I worked for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I was. I worked in the afternoons. I was summertime. You know, summertime's busy, so I'm running around all over the place, driving around. Like I worked outside of the tarmac. I work. I, I used to push, load. Um, I used to push, load, de-ice, tow, offload. I did everything. I worked on every single airplane. Seven point seven. I'm sorry, I'm getting to a tangent. No, but, yeah, but, but you work in the airport, especially some like JFK Airport and international flights. Mm-hmm. It's hectic. It's crazy. So I didn't have enough time to like draw as, as much as I as I could. However, I had time to write. I had time to write. And then one of my, I used to, I used to walk around work all the time with a backpack and a, and a notebook mm-hmm. and just write my ideas. Someone's like, yo, you got an iPhone, you put notes in that. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, I didn't have an iPhone before, I never had an iPhone before that. He said, you can write notes. I said, really? So he told me, yeah, just go to your notes and you can write all your ideas in. And then once I did that, I, I, I just ran with it. I literally have like over a thousand notes now <laughs> with that. So, um, the same, yeah. I'd be at work and I would just, like, I wrote this whole book at work. That's okay. I wrote That's the majority of the book sitting at work. Like, I, I, I'm like, I'm sitting I, at a, iPhone notes, right? Yeah, iPhone notes. Yeah. Insane, I'm yeah. sitting, like, I would be sitting, I would be sitting at a huff, like a, a, a push tub. <laughs> already hooked up the tool bar to the plane and everything I'm pushing a 767 that's going out to like I don't know like France or like Italy or whatever and I'm about to push and I'm just like yo hold on a second <laughs> and then, all right. and I, I put my headphone on I was like okay okay captain I'm ready that was that was a hustle I was doing like so then um yeah so um I realized I need help I, I was trying to do both I said I can't do it because by the time I get home I'm done I'm done I'd be, I'd be loading Flights and, and you know I jump in the belly plane, so I just be exhausted. A lot of physical labor, yeah, it's really very physically demanding. So by the time I get home, I, I get home, take a shower, I'm I'm passed out, I'm done, and I would just I would ten hour, twelve hour days, like just crazy. And then on top of that, I'm trying to do this thing as well, and mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. And it took me a long time. I had to put my pride to the side. It, 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 it took me like a good, I would say, a good year before I realized I need help. Yeah, so cool. then I started looking. Someone's like, "Yo, reach out to somebody." So. I reached out, I found I found David on an art sharing site and I, I reached out to him. I told him what I was trying to do and he said, yo, I love it. And I said, alright, yo, I got I got a lot of money, so you ain't gotta worry about it. I'll pay you, pay you handsomely, don't worry about it. Anything you need, I got you. And it started out business, but then eventually when we realized we had a lot in common, we started we started really clicking and we became friends and that's that's my that's my growth for life now, you know, ten years. You know, same thing with Nicholas too, but I'll sense. tell you about him later. But yeah, so that's how, but that's how it started. And then um, when I when I wanted to do the Kickstarter campaign, um, Nicholas came along because David told Nicholas about what he was doing. And he said, "Yo, this is some dope shit." And then he said, "Yo, hell yeah, I want it." And the thing about Nicholas, he's a graffiti artist in, in Paris. He's a professional graffiti artist. Yeah, he does a lot of. And he has a lot of graffiti fans over here too. So, I mean, it worked. It all worked. You know, they're and I'm just lucky because they're they're very they're very talented. Man. They're stupid talented. <laughs> So I'm, I'm very grateful for having them. I talk to them every day. So. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost every day. So yeah, that's how. But that's how we got together as far as like putting together the team. It was a happenstance. So yeah. the collaboration of everything. Right, together. right, right, right. I want to ask. Um, so you said you started with the doodle of the mm-hmm. girl first. That's Inez. Yes. Yeah. Inez. So like with your the characters, you have Inez, you have Gabriel, Cameron, and Giselle. Did they? Did you have them all at once, or they like kind of show up Inez as the story? Was yeah, the yeah. Head, so so Inez is first. Uh-huh. Um, She's loosely based off of uh, my cousin and my little sister. And um, Gabriel, he's loosely based off of uh, actually a character. You might not know about it, but he's, he's based off of somebody from a sitcom. This old sitcom from the 70s it's called Welcome Back. Uh, you know about this, Welcome Back Cotter. Yeah. Yes. So I used to watch that back in the 90s, the reruns of like Nick and Knight and like local television. My mom was a big fan of it. And the funny thing about it is that Gabriel's kind of like a correlation, not only of, there's a character in the show called uh, Boom Boom Washington. If you, if, you look, if you Google Boom Boom Washington, and you see, it's like, oh my goodness, that's Gabriel. 
everyone thinks he's based off of like Spike. That's yeah. when people they think he's like, oh, he's like Spike Spiegel. He's like, no, right. this is actually off of a real actor that was played by his, that, that played uh, in Washington, <laughs> and um, he lived in Coney Island, Brooklyn. That's where the character was from. And it's also a correlation to my dad because when my dad first came to America from Haiti, he was living in Coney Island. So that's where the correlation. So it's a mixture between that character and my dad. My dad had that style too as well. He had the but he had like the, the tinted shades. <laughs> that's only you know the seventies. So that's where Gabriel came from. Um, Giselle, she's Lucy based off of this girl I used to talk to. Um, I was like, I was her age. She was older than me. <laughs> and um, her name was uh, her name was Giselle. I changed the last name, but her name was Giselle, and she was uh, she was Puerto Rican and Dominican. And she was yeah, she was somebody you know. I really got along with her. She was gorgeous, by the way. So, um, but she's Lucy based off of her. And uh, Cameron, she's based off of I would say she's based I would say she's based, she's based off of a mix of like Samus from um, Metroid. Uh -huh. And like if basically if Samus lived in New York, <laughs> like. If Samus was a real life person in New York, what would she be? I thought about a bounty hunter or whatever. I said, nah, make her a cop. Make her under mm -hmm. So that's where the correlation came from, as far as where the characters are based off. So they're loosely all based off of real people. Mm -hmm. Most of them. Most of them. And you didn't have them all at once. They just they no, kind of no, just popped no. in as Ines the story came, was going. Right? Yeah, 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 Ines came first, and then Gabriel. And how and far then, along before? Uh, Cameron. Cameron came like years later. Oh. Because Ines and mm -hmm. Gabriel came in like 2004. And. Cameron came in like 2009, and so did Giselle in 2009. She was originally supposed to be Brazilian, actually Giselle. But yeah, but I changed it to um, uh, Dominican instead. Right. So, so yeah. Like I said, they're all loosely based off of just a lot. It's an amalgamation. If I name you, I'm going to be all there. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to ask, um, how do you think, since since when you started to now, how do you think the comic book industry just has changed in general? Like, especially with like this whole kind of anime and manga boom that happened during lockdown, where even people who weren't necessarily into anime and manga, all of a sudden, because they were like at home, started to watch it and get into it. Like, how do you think that has changed and influenced just the industry in general? I think it changed both. I think it changed mostly for the better. Um, I'm going to talk old man. <laughs> My biggest issue though is that I think a lot of people take too much inspiration from other anime and manga series and I think they should take more inspiration from real life and live action and classic movies and not just classic movies, I think they should take like a, they should take a lot of their ideas from bad movies too like that's the Quentin Tarantino way I mean, he gets a lot of his great ideas from really bad movies because just because they're bad doesn't mean they're all bad movies. Right, like, right, right, oh this movie, was, this movie was garbage but you know what, like this idea was good, that idea was good I could maybe try to use some of that and put that towards this or that. So I think that's the, that's the I would say that's the drawback. Um, yeah, like so much of it's formulaic. Yeah, yeah it's formulaic it's and just now, people yeah. just copy paste from other stuff. Yeah, Cause like, it, it works, it's safe, so they right, do Right, right. Cause a lot of kids, they, they, they approach me, they, they email me, they hit me up on IG. They say, oh, I, you know, I, my stuff is inspired by Naruto or whatever, whatever. Like, oh, that's cool, nothing wrong with that, but you gotta like. Everything is inspired by Naruto. Now. Yeah. Yeah, Naruto, yeah. <laughs> and then the next wave is gonna be like, just Demon Slayer, Demon Slayer, and, Slayer yeah, 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 all that type of stuff. So I don't think movies at this point. Right, I don't think anything's wrong with that, but it's like, don't, like, don't. <laughs> try to be more, try to try to think more out the box. And I know people say, "Oh well, uh, my life is boring. I don't really do much." I don't have to be, be boring. I'm boring too. You can just watch trash movies, and you'll find plenty of material. You can, I'm not saying copy them. Well, right, right, yeah. You can get inspired by a lot of stuff. You don't have to. Yeah, have your stuff make, doesn't always have to be like a blockbuster. No, it doesn't yeah, have to be. Yeah, that, but that's the thing. That's that's a problem to a lot of people. Like to take as much blockbuster stuff, and it's like you get the blockbuster stuff. Everybody's gonna, everybody's gonna look the same. That's why oh, I gotta, saturated. That's, that's why I got yeah. That's why I got to go into the trash heap so you can get your treasure. Like <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, great. So with that, would you? So I was gonna ask kind of to end here. Um, what kind of advice would you have for an upcoming um, comic book creator, someone who wants to get into it and start? You got, you're gonna suck for a long time. <laughs> I mean, it's true. You're gonna suck. I mean, I, I, I used to, I was terrible for a very long time. So, um, just know that it's a process. It's not, you know, in the age of instant gratification. Uh -huh. You know, that's, you're gonna have to put in the work. And not just put the work, you gotta have patience. Because if you don't, then everything's not gonna flesh out how you want it to. And, you know, you're gonna fail. And the, the difference between, the people who win and the people who just don't do anything with what they have is that they fail and they just fold. And the others, they fail and it's like they're even more motivated because all it takes is like one W. You don't need like 50 W's. You can have 50 L's 
It's just one just W. Takes the right. Just take one yes. Right. I've had plenty of L's, but Dark Horse, that's a W right there. So I'm like, well. And I just needed one. Yeah, and, and, and this, and I'll be honest with you, like, I, I tried quitting so many times. I tried quitting. My family told me if I quit, they would stop talking to me. Like, I was gonna, like, I was gonna go back to my old job and, okay, don't do it, don't do it, snap, don't do it, snap. Like, keep going, keep going. Like, I, I, I quit, I would say I quit about, maybe like five, ten times. Because it's frustrating. I, I lost a lot of opportunity, lost a lot of money, you know, and invest in yourself. That's another thing, too. I invested in myself. You know, I can't tell you how much I put in, but I put in a lot. <laughs> so, uh, over the last ten years, but, um, yeah, you're gonna fail it. It's, it's a process. Everything's a process. That's, that's what growth is all about, you know, so. You gotta take the time. Rome wasn't built there. I know it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> Rome wasn't built there. <laughs> Can I just throw one question at you yeah. as a post yeah, question? No post question if, would be great. If, you're, if Teflon Funk were optioned to be a movie, who would you like to see starring as these characters? That's a good question. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually, yeah, yeah. I've, gotten, I've, actually got, I've actually been approached for live action. <laughs> and I said no. Like, oh, oh, really? Okay. okay. I want animation first. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, because, yeah. because, um, okay. That's fair. Yeah, but you know what it is? Because it's like, like, I know there's exceptions, but, like, um, my whole thing is, like, if I get live action, I'm never getting animated. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, it's easier so, to go from good answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, 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 I mean, there's exceptions, like, there's Black Dynamite or stuff like that. There's, mm -hmm. But there's very, there's men in black, I guess, but there's not that many. So, yeah, that's a that's a that's a very that's those exception. Are, those are goal. exceptions yeah, yeah. because who was behind it? This was Michael J. J. White, and he also had Carl Jones, the guy who uh, worked on Boondocks as well, <laughs> and um, the, uh, uh, with Men in Black, obviously, you know, Will Smith and, and, and Tommy Lee Jones. So yeah, that's a big. I'm not Tommy Lee Jones. I'm not Will Smith. So so I know it's like, oh, if I get live action, <laughs> bye bye animation. So <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, I, yeah, I think animation then. Okay. Live action, yeah. live action. I'm, I'm open to live action, but but animation first. Animation yeah, yeah, first, right? Right. Okay. right. So yeah. I can get my coin, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Well, so um, thank you very much no, for speaking with us. Thank it you was for having awesome. me. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, Teflon Fuck, published by Dark Horse Comics, is available at Kino Kaniya Bookstores, New York City. The link will be in the description box below. We will have signed copies in the store while supplies last. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day. Thank you.